If you look in your bag right now, you have hand sanitizer in there. And for the vast majority of us, hand, hand sanitizer is really just a byproduct of the pandemic. That is, unless you're Andrea Lisbona. As a child growing up in Barcelona, Spain, Andrea was into everything from sports to acting. Her family supported every new venture. But in 2008, like so many other families, Andrea's family hit rock bottom after the financial crash. At the time, Andrea was studying fashion here in the U.S. And while she had never quit anything she started, she knew she had to leave her studies to help her family. What began as an experiment in 2010 turned into a multi-million dollar business and is quickly turning into an international household name. Household name is right. Here it is, Touchland. Joining us this morning is the founder of Touchland, Andrea Lisbona. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Thank you for having me, Marisol. <laughs> Absolutely. So in full transparency to everyone at home, I met Andrea a few months ago and knew that I wanted to introduce her to all of you at home because your story is just so inspiring. So you created the company, uh, this product, Touchland, in 2010 before any of us were really using hand sanitizer. Why hand sanitizer? It's a good question that I get asked a lot. Um, I started in, in 2010 um, because um, hand sanitizer for me is a product that no one realizes but makes part of everyone's life. Especially when you are on the go, um, you're going out with friends, taking an Uber, riding a bike, you don't have water and soap available. So truly hand sanitizer become that ally on the go that people didn't realize um, until very few <laughs> months ago. <laughs> and, and I think for us, um, we, I'm an experienced driven person, a brand person, and same of Nespresso and Dyson and Apple. This was an industry that was full of commodities that smelled like tequila, were very sticky. Mm -hmm. So of course, they said, of course, people don't want to use hand sanitizer if it's such an unpleasing experience. So our goal was to create a product that people would not use because they had to, but people would use because they wanted to. They wanted to. And I love, you are truly an entrepreneur because you were looking at these big brands, like, like you said, like Apple, like Nespresso, and saying, how do we make hand sanitizer sexy? Because the packaging itself is, is beautiful. It's really pretty. Here, here are the different flavors. Um, and I can, I can say that I use it all the time. Um, and you told me a little trick that if I have to go into a bathroom that doesn't smell good, this also helps. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> I wonder though, so, so fast forward, so you were obviously ahead of the curve here with hand sanitizer and then COVID happens. And before COVID happens, you actually brought the company here to the United States because you started it in your home country of Spain. So how did, how did the pandemic change your approach, change what you did as a company and with your team? Yeah, so for us, our biggest change came when we moved to the U.S. I think the market reception was amazing. We launched with a Kickstarter campaign in 2018, fully funded in 24 hours. So the love that people have given to the brand since day one has been amazing. Um, when the pandemic came in, um, I always try to think about middle long term. We started this company to build a very large company that really changes people's lives for the best. So when the pandemic came in, we were actually concerned because like every pandemic, the amount of new hand sanitizer brands, opportunistic companies, people that just come to this industry with like a, a economic goal. While mm -hmm. for us, when we were alone for 10 years, trying to create something that is better and upgraded and all that, um, we were basically alone. Um, so when the pandemic came in for us was, let's try to think what Touchland is gonna be in 2022, 2023, how can we make an impact? Um, so for example, we took initiatives um, like um, donating 5% of the, every container that we received to frontline workers, because again, we created Touchland to help. So when you're living a pandemic and frontline workers don't have hand sanitizer to fight Here the pandemic. They are. And they, you other, were, you, yeah. You were, you were ahead, you were, you were already forward thinking about this isn't just about money despite the fact that you exceeded your Kickstarter fund in 24 hours, it wasn't just about the money. It was about how do we put this in the hands of people that need it? We are, we're running out of time, but if what amazes me about you is that you are this entrepreneur, you saw really dark days. What would you say to our viewers 
who are in the process of starting a company or who have a company and have encountered some sort of pitfall, what do you say to them so that they can really hold on to their dreams and continue on their path? Persevere. I, I think it's the typical word that entrepreneurs say, but that's the true reality. I'm someone that started in 2010 when through these years, everyone said that I was crazy, that mm -hmm. I should give up. And it came true. I think it's, it's about perseverance and never giving up on your dreams um, because I would not change anything that we've gone through um, that has gotten where we are today. Well, Andrea Lisbona, you are wise beyond your years. You were an inspiration for so many people, specifically me. I love what you were doing. By the way, you can find this everywhere. It's on the top 10 gift list. Just open up any magazine and there it is. Thank you so much for spending this time with us this Thank morning. You. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Marisol, for having me. Absolutely. There you go. Touchland. All right, give me a spritz. We have mm. some. Oh, okay. oh, oh my God, it smells yeah. so good, too. Yeah. Like,